She didn't look at the woman, but focused on the washing bag in her hand. She examined the drawstring as she passed over it. As she passed it over, money was handed out to her, and then nothing. The mayor's wife, who never spoke, simply stood in her bathroom. Her soft fluffy hair tied back into a short tail. There was the suggestion of a drought from inside, something like the imagined breath of a corpse. Still, there were no words, and while Lysel found the courage to face her, the woman wore an expression not of approach but utter distance. 
she was holding a tower of books against her stomach for her knee from her navel to the beginnings navel nav <laughs> from her navel to the beginning of her breasts she looked so vulnerable in the monstrous doorway long light lashes and just the slightest twinge of expression or suggestion come and see Sad. She's going to torture me, Lysol decided. She's going to take me inside, light the fireplace, and throw me in, books and all. Or she'll lock me in the basement without any food. For some reason, though, most likely, most likely, the lure of the books she found herself walking in. The squeaking of her shoes on the wooden floorboards made her cringe. And when she hit a sore spot, including the wood to grow, in using the wood to grow, she almost stopped. The mayor's wife was not terror. She only looked briefly behind and continued on to a chestnut colour. Now her face asked a question. Are you ready? Lysol craned her neck a little as if she might see over the door that stood in her way. Clearly, that was the cue to open it. Jesus Mary. She said it out loud, the words disrupt distributed into the room that was full of cold air and books. Books everywhere. Each wall was armed with overcrowded yet immaculate shelving. It was barely possible to see the paintwork. There were all different styles and, s and sizes of lettering on the spines of the black, the red, the grey, the every coloured books. It was one of the most beautiful things Lysel Leminger had ever seen. With wonder, she smiled. That's a, that, that's, that such a room existed. Even when she tried to wipe the smile away with her forearm, she realized instantly that it was a pointless ex exercise. She could feel the eyes of the woman traveling her body. And when she looked at her, rested on her face. There was more silence than she ever thought possible. It extended like an elastic drying, dying to break. The girl broke it. Can I? The two words stood among acres and acres of vacant wooden floored land. The books were miles away. The woman nodded. Yes, you can. Steadily, the room shrank till the book thief could touch the shelves within a small step. She ran the back of her hand along the first shelf, listening to the shovel of her fingernails gliding across the spine, spinal cord of each book. It sounded like an instrument, or the notes of running feet. She looked, she used both hands, she raised them, one shelf against the other. When she laughed, her voice was sprawled out, high in her throat, and when she eventually stopped and stood in the middle of the room, she spent many minutes looking from the shelves, her fingers, and back again. How many books had she touched? How many books had she felt? She walked over and did it again. This time much more slowly with her hands facing forward, allowing the dove of her palm to feel the small hurdle of each book. It felt like magic. 
Marcel didn't finish the question but actually performed what she was going to ask, walking over and taking the books gently from the woman's arms. She then placed them into the missing piece, to the missing piece in the shelf, by the, by the slightly open window. The outside cold was streaming in, for a moment she considered closing it.
herself again. Coming forward to stand beside her husband, she nodded very faintly, waited, and closed the door. It took Liza a minute or so to leave. She smiled at the steps. That's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed. So, uh...